What's up guys? Jersey Josh coming to you from my garage in Jersey. Um, little video about the bike today. So one of the biggest questions we all hear asked in the group is, how many amp hours is your battery? How far can you ride on a charge? Probably one of the top questions I hear in this group, other groups. Um, and you're always looking for more range, right? But you don't want to lose too much power, so there's always that fine line of range to power. Um, my bike has a Panasonic 49 amp hour battery. Uh, I think it's like 150 amp. And it's got 3.2 milliamp hour watt cells. Um, but, you know, I, I'd say off road, if I ride it hard, I might get 20 miles safely. And I mean hard, I'm like, you know, really, really killing it. If I ride on the street, keep the speed under 30 miles per hour, easy on the throttle, I could probably get about maybe, you know, upper 40s. Um, and keep in mind, this is a heavy bike. You're talking like 200 pounds. I'm about 200 pounds. Um, you know, I'm running very low tire pressure, about 13 PSI, maybe a little more in the front, I think. But um, there's really no more room in this case um, for another battery. It, it fills it up and, you know, I have my controller inside the case as well. Um, so there's no more room for a bigger battery and I don't really want the controller to be outside of the bike. I really didn't look that look, but I figured I still do have this compartment. I was talking to Raymond Yu. Uh, he's, he's on here. I'm going to put a link to him in the description. He's part of the master behind this whole thing. Um, him and I were bouncing back and forth ideas of how, you know, how can we, you know, bump up my range on this. So I, you know, we, we thought about a few different things, fitting something in here, no, no room too tight. Maybe something back under there. No, really not enough room under there either. So I, I thought, well, I have the battery compartment. Well, I mean the controller compartment. I had it off the bike because I like the look of it off the bike. So I'm thinking, well, let's see what we can do. So I gave him the measurements. I think it's like 13 and a half by four and a half by two inches. I think that's, you can measure it exactly. Um, so I gave him the specs and the dude cranked out a battery in like a day, which I was really surprised at. So big props to, to Ray. Um, so it's a 10.5 amp hour battery near the LG uh, MJ1 cell. So by his estimation, it should give me 10.5 extra amp hours. It should give me about 40 amps more of power. Right, um, I'm actually using a Sabaton 72200 controller, uh, but it's locked, so I can't change any of my settings. So I actually do have an unlocked version on the way. I think I paid like 280 for a new 72200, and it's taking a little more time because I don't want any tabs on it because the tabs will not fit inside this compartment with this giant battery I already have in here. So what we're going to do today is I actually already mounted up the battery inside, and I'll show you a closer shot of that, but battery inside of the controller box. Um, I already did that already. I should have got that on video. Sorry, I didn't. What I had to do is I had to drill a hole inside and um, we'll get you a little closer. You check that out. Now, one thing I also did, so you can see here, um, I, I taped off the holes here to make sure no water is going to get in there. Um, there's a hole in the bottom too, taped it off, and then I put some uh, rubberized grip over the side vent holes to keep the water out from the sides. Now I'm not saying obviously you're going to have space here, um, and in your wire holes here I have like a, a gasket that I'm going to put in there. Um, you can get a water in there, but at least this will give me a little more protection than it would normally have. So as you can see I have the uh, the sides off here. Um, here's the space I have to work with. So, battery's mounted in this control box, right like this. What Raymond did is he put the wire coming out of the top of the battery. So I had to drill a hole in here to put it straight up through. Um, what I actually, to do that, um, I used one of these metal brackets. What I did is I took this bracket, I put it in there right where the hole is because when you're drilling with one of these bits, this is a cobalt bit. These bits are awesome. I got it from Harbor Freight. Um, 
And I don't really recommend everything from Harbor Freight, but this was a steal. I couldn't find them anywhere else. Um, there's been times I've had to drill stuff, they wouldn't touch it. This is one of the only things that actually work for some of the things I've had to do. Um, but I was drilling underneath this hole, and it's the battery kind of overlaps the existing hole where it was already. So I was like, man, I am not drilling into this battery. So I put this under there so that when it came up, you know, it wouldn't drill in the battery, it just kind of gave me a, a buffer which it, you can see it actually hit it, so it's a good thing I did that. Always try to think ahead, especially where a battery is concerned. So, talking about hooking it up, right? This is the power line Anderson 120 amp connector that goes to the controller. This is the Anderson 120 amp that comes from the battery, obviously they go together. So, it was like, well, how do you run this together? So what you gotta do is the XT, con XT connector, which you saw on the other side, um, has to go in parallel with this and they both have to plug into this. What I did was I made an adapter. I made an adapter um, to go here and then did a split. I accidentally used a, <laughs> like, a like a total idiot. I used, a, I had a female connector. I didn't like to look at it so I threw it down, picked up a male connector and didn't even realize it was a male connector. Made the saw, so made the parallel connection with this, and then I went to pull it, and I'm like, crap, it's a wrong connection. So I completely wasted. So I have two six aug pieces of wire here, and I have to make a parallel connection with this and this. So you're gonna run your black and your red together like this, and they're gonna go inside these giant two aug Anderson tabs, right? Um, which they go in here. So I have one for either side, which will go in between the connections. Uh, I've got some heat shrink for the ends. And I got my trusty crimpers. Now you're definitely gonna need this big crimper. Um, because <laughs> your small ones on these two amp crimps are not gonna cut the mustard. These are thick and they're hard and you wanna make sure you get a really good tight connection. These things are cheap. I got them on Amazon for like, I don't know, 30 bucks. Um, yeah, they're not the best thing in the world compared to like hundred some dollar hex crimps, which are hydraulic and they're big and they're heavy, but they'll do the job. This is really thick heat shrink. Um, and if you try to use a hairdryer, it's not gonna work, it's not hot enough. I do not have a heat gun. So since the hairdryer doesn't work, what I have to do is use the old blow-tain torch. Now, I did this one already. Um, you just gotta be careful when using the blow torch that you don't burn it. It's very easy to burn it or melt the silicone wire. Um, this one's okay, I got a little burn spots on it. Uh, but as long as you, you hold it underneath and come up, the heat will come up. Um, it's usually effective. Slowly rotate it. Constantly move it because you don't want that flame. That's it. See? There you go. Not bad. So a tip, you guys. Um, with these really, see this is a two gauge uh, connector tab. So it's actually a little, slightly big for this wire. So a trick I do when you have this type of thing, you want to get it nice and tight right up against it. Put a piece, a little piece of electrical tape just to hold it in place while I crimp it. That way, when I go to put it in here, it doesn't slide out. It's tight, it's hard. All right, it's the one side. Now for the black side. All right guys, so we have a successfully made adapter cable. As you can see, we have one side, both ends clicked in, and we have the other side, both ends clicked in, with the XT60 wired in. Female this time, I should say. Got it right. A couple things. Since this heat shrink was really thick, um, I didn't realize it was gonna be that thick and when I tried to put it inside the connectors, I couldn't get them all the way in and get that little click that you really wanna get with the Anderson connector. So I had to take a utility knife 
Um, and by the way, these Irwin utility knives are awesome. It's, it's so easy to change the blades out to like two seconds, side note, but you have to take your utility knife, trim back some of my, um, some of my heat shrink just to make sure I could get them in there and get that clip because you want to make sure you get them all the way in. And then I tested it, clipped it together, and pulled it back out to make sure that when you pull it back out, your little tabs aren't popping back either. Make sure you get a good, strong connection. So there we go. Next step. All right, guys. So, one more truth. Um, first, I am going to connect the Anderson XT60. And then I'm going to go battery to adapter. Uh, positive and negative. All right, man, here is the moment of truth. I'm almost like hesitant to <laughs> make sure you got your red to red like bike. It only goes in one way, so. All right, here we go. Got that little pop, which is typical of batteries when you plug them in. We'll turn it on. So I'll turn on the key switch. And we're gonna hit the power. So we got power here. And here we got, we go, 81.1 volts. So I am going to charge it up. They charge together on the same port. It's underneath, which I'm actually thinking about moving that port. Um, so they charge together, we'll charge up to 100%. The true test, I really guess, will be riding it. You know, I don't see how much more mileage I get out of it. Um, and then we'll see if, so you should get more power. Now, I don't know if I'll get more power initially because my controller, I think, is locked at 150 amps continuous. Um, the, 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 mat, the phase is still max at 450 in that, but I, you know, again, I don't know. We'll see if I notice any difference. You should theoretically. Uh, 40 more amps, you should definitely see some power gains, but you know, like I said, we'll see. I'm gonna have to close it all up. And uh, it's raining out today, so I can't really ride it out there today, but. Um, Two days later. Guys, what's up? Not the woods here. A couple days later, uh, a little gloomy day, a little chilly, so I got the jacket on today. Um, so I've taken a few rides, and so prior to me doing this, from what I remember, the last ride I took was about 14 miles. When I got back to my house, battery was at um, 71%. Okay, that was about 14 miles, and that was riding out in this, like riding pretty hard, so I was pushing it. And then the ride before that, I did a longer one. It was about, I think it was like 16, 17, 18 mile range. I remember when I got back from that ride, the battery was about um, 49%. Um, and that was also another hard ride, riding through this deep sand, up these hills, and these pretty thick terrain here. Um, and then when I did a really long road one time about just keeping under 30 mile an hour for mostly roads, I think I did about 37 miles on that ride. When I was done, I had about 40% um, battery left, but I don't think that was a real 40%. I think it was actually less than that. So the last two rides I've taken out here, uh, the one last night, I did 12 and a half miles rode up pretty fairly hard the dirt, the hills, and the sand. Um, when I got back to the house, I had 83% um, left, and I was at 70, 78 volts. Um, so, and then today, so far, I've, I've already ridden six miles, and I'm at like 97% battery out here in the woods. So, I, you know, I, I definitely think this battery upgrade it's worth it. It's 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 giving me some extra mileage so far, um, especially when you go on a longer ride. I, I assume on the road it'll that's really really shine if you, if you keep your speeds down. You're not throttling it too much. Um, so I would I, I would recommend that. So 
like I told you before earlier in the video, I'm getting the new Sabaton 72200 controller unlocked, so I should be able to take advantage of the extra 40 amps the secondary battery is putting out. Um, so we'll see if that happens. If it's if it if it works, great. Um, if it doesn't, well, at least I get the extra amp hours and gives me the extra range for my rides. Uh, if you guys are looking to do something like this, you know, I'm sure you're you're at your your regular battery builder can do this. Like I said, I use Raymond U. Uh, like I cranked it out right to my specifications really fast. Was there to answer any questions for me, which I really appreciated. Um, so yeah, definitely good option. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Hey, hit like and subscribe, and I hope you have a fun ride.